The Mitten by Jan Brett. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was enough room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in, also the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they let him in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, 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 chew! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow-white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw he still had his new mittens. Hello Lighthouse by Sophie Blackall On the highest rock of a tiny island at the edge of the world 
stands a lighthouse. It is built to last forever, sending its light out to sea, guiding the ships on their way. From dusk to dawn, the lighthouse beams. Hello, 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 lighthouse. The new keeper arrives to replace the old, to carry on tending the light. He polishes the lens and refills the oil and trims the burned end of the wick. Throughout the night, he winds the clockwork that keeps the lamp in motion. During the day, he gives the round rooms a fresh coat of sea green paint. He writes in the log book and threads his needle and listens to the gathering wind. The wind takes a deep breath and blows and blows. Hello, hello, hello. The keeper boils water and drinks his tea as he fishes for cod from the window. He sets the table and hums a tune and wishes for someone to talk to. Every few days he writes her a letter and throws it into the waves. He tends the light and writes in the log book and waits for her reply. The sky grows dark and the waves rise and crash. Hello, hello, hello. The keeper looks through his telescope. The tender arrives bringing oil and flour and pork and beans and his wife. He shows her around the round rooms of their house. He tends the light and writes in the log book and sets the table for two. The fog makes everything disappear. A bell must be rung to warn the ships. Clang, clang, clang. One thick night, the disaster strikes. A boat is wrecked on the rocks. Not a moment to lose, the keeper rows out. He pulls three sailors from the deep black sea. He tends the light and writes in the log book and wraps the sailors in blankets. The sea turns into a carpet of ice. Hello, hello, hello. One dawn, the keeper begins to sneeze. By dusk, he is terribly ill. His wife is everywhere all at once, running up and down spiral stairs. She tends the light and feeds him broth and chips ice off the lantern room windows. She sits by his side and writes in the log book the minute his fever breaks. The icebergs pass by on their journey south. The whales pass by on their journey north. Hello, hello, hello. Inside the lighthouse, the woman walks around and around the room. Her husband boils water and helps her breathe in and out. He tends the light and writes in the log book and notes the birth of their child. The sky erupts in swirls of green. Hello, hello, hello. The tender arrives bringing oil and flour and pork and beans and the mail. Along with fresh books and news from the land, there's an unexpected letter with the Coast Guard seal. The keeper winds the clockwork and polishes the lens just as he's always done. He tends the light and writes in the log book, but knows that it's not for long. Together, they watch the horizon. The Coast Guard arrives with a brand new light and installs the machine to run it. No lamp to fill, no wick to trim. The keeper's work is done. He climbs to the top of the spiral stairs and closes the log book for good. They pack their belongings into the boat and wave farewell to the gulls. Beyond the breakers, they all look up. Goodbye, lighthouse. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. On the highest rock of a tiny island at the edge of the world stands a lighthouse. It is built to last forever, sending its light out to the sea. 
The fog rolls in and the fog rolls out. The waves rise and crash. The wind blows and blows. Hello. 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 Over the waves across the bay, a light on the land beams back. Hello. 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 Hello, lighthouse.